biostat squid. In this video, we'll cover the basics of analysis of variants or ANOVA. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Let's imagine you've just invented three new super fertilizers, fertilizers A, B, and C, and you want to know which one makes plants grow the tallest. Each group of plants gets a different fertilizer, and after four weeks, you measure their height. Now it's time to check if the difference in plant height between groups is real, if it's statistically significant. In other words, if one of the fertilizers actually works better than the others. If we wanted to compare fertilizers A and B, we could use a standard t-test to compare their means. However, when we have more than two groups, we would need to make pairwise comparisons between each combination of the groups, and using multiple t-tests increases the risk of type 1 error, so false positives. So the probability of concluding that there is a difference between fertilizers when in fact there isn't, increases. When we want to compare more than two groups, we use analysis of variance or ANOVA, which controls for false positives by testing all groups simultaneously. So our question is, do these fertilizers make a statistically significant difference in plant growth, or is this just random chance that one group grew more than the other? Let's break down ANOVA in four simple steps. So first, as with any hypothesis test, we state our null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis argues that all fertilizers are equal, so there is no difference in plant height. The alternative hypothesis says that at least one fertilizer is causing a difference in plant height. The test will give us a p-value, and if it's low enough, we can say that there is a statistically significant difference between at least one fertilizer. So step two involves calculating variability. The core idea of ANOVA is to partition the total variation in our data into two components. ANOVA looks at two kinds of variation and defines the total variance as the sum of between groups variance and within group variance. You might have also seen it as the sum of squares, which is just the way to mathematically measure variability. So between groups variance measures how group means differ from the overall mean. So it's actually trying to answer the question, are the group averages far apart? The within groups variance, on the other hand, measures how individual values vary within each group. This is also called the error variance. So even if all plants within a group were given the same fertilizer, there's going to be some variability. When comparing groups, we need to take into account this within groups variance, which contains all the unexplained variance, so variance that is not due to the fertilizers. Let's just visualize this with a few examples. Imagine the measurements of height between groups looks like this. It's easy to say that fertilizer C is much better, right? The variance within groups is very small, but the variance between groups, in this case between C and the other groups, is quite big. Now imagine the measurements of height look like this. It's not so clear now. C has a slightly higher average, but the variance within each group is quite big, and the variance between groups is not that big. In actual fact, it could be just noise, and just by random sampling, you pick the highest plants that were given fertilizer C, and the smallest plants that got fertilizers A and B. If you repeated the experiment again, A or B could be slightly higher. So essentially, ANOVA tries to quantify this, giving us a number that will help us decide whether there is or not a difference between at least one of the groups. If at least one of the groups truly has different means, the between-group variation should be large relative to the within-group variation. This value I'm referring to is the f-value, which is defined as the between-group variance divided by the within-group variance. More specifically, we say it's the MSB divided by the MSW, MS being the mean sum of squares between groups or within groups. Essentially, we're testing whether the between-group variance is significantly larger 
than the error variance. Wait a minute, how did we get MS values from SS values? The SS values represent the actual partitioning of total variance into components. The mean sum of squares, or the MS values, actually are the SS values divided by their degrees of freedom. This gives us an unbiased estimate of the different variance components, or the different sources of variation. Raw SS values depend on the sample size. Larger samples naturally have larger SS values, even with the same underlying variance. Dividing the SS values by the degrees of freedom adjusts for this, giving us variance estimates that can fairly be compared regardless of sample size. So to summarize all this, we use the MS values to calculate the F statistic because there are proper variance estimates that don't depend on sample size. Okay, back to our F value. You want your F value to be big, that is, your small variance within groups, but big variance between groups. A smaller F value close to one means that the group means are likely similar. So the null hypothesis is not rejected. I won't go too much into it, but the F statistic follows an F distribution under the null hypothesis, and this is a known probability distribution that tells us how likely we are to see different F values by chance alone. And this leads us to step three, getting the p-value. So with the ANOVA test, as with any statistical test, we will get a p-value. And the idea behind this is that with every statistical test comes uncertainty. So the p-value tells us the probability of observing an f-statistic as large as or larger than the one we calculated, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. In other words, if all group means are equal, so there's no difference between fertilizers, there's, in this example, there's a 1.2% chance that we're seeing these differences between fertilizers. It's up to you to decide on the level of significance, but usually a small p-value, typically under 0 0.05, um, means there's strong evidence against the null hypothesis, suggesting that at least one group mean um, differs significantly from the rest there is a statistically significant difference in plant height among fertilizers. A large p-value, on the other hand, means there's insufficient evidence to conclude that group means differ. With this data, we cannot say that there's a difference in height. Maybe we just need a bigger sample, but we cannot claim that there is no difference. We got a p-value of 0.012, which is lower than 0.05, so we can say that there is a difference. At least one fertilizer had a, a different effect in plant height than the rest. But wait, we still don't know which one. This leads us to step four. We often use a post-hoc test, like a Tucky test, to make pairwise comparisons and decide which fertilizers are different between each other. A versus B, A versus C, and B versus C. Tucky's test is a better option for multiple pairwise comparisons than a student uh, t-test because of several reasons, which you can see here. Um, but you might be wondering, if I really just wanted to know which groups differ, why not skip ANOVA and jump straight to the Tucky test? The short answer is that Tucky's test assumes you've already found a significant result using ANOVA. It's designed to control the error rate after you've found a significant difference somewhere. Great! So Tucky's test tells us that fertilizer C is the winner. It made plants grow significantly taller than A and B. But wait! We forgot to take into account sunlight conditions. Now we're testing two independent variables at the same time, and maybe how they interact. So now we have two variables, the fertilizer type, A, B, or C, and sunlight level, low or high. The question now is, does fertilizer type, sunlight level, or their combination affect plant height? Let's define our groups. So as you can see, one-way ANOVA isn't enough here. We need two-way ANOVA. Two-way just means we're testing two factors. And actually, we're testing each factor, fertilizer and sunlight, but also whether their combination has a special effect. 
maybe fertilizer A only works in high sun. Like with one-way ANOVA, we split the total variation we observe between plant heights into groups. Two-way ANOVA partitions the total variation into four components. The main effect of factor A, so how much of the total variation in height is due to differences between fertilizer types. The main effect of factor B, how much sunlight levels alone affect plant height. The interaction effect, how the combination of factors affects the outcome beyond their individual effects, and then the error or residual variation, which is unexplained variation within groups, what's left over, random variation between individual plants. For example, differences due to watering levels or genetics or whatever it is. 2A ANOVA produces three separate F tests, one for the type of fertilizer, one for sunlight, and one for the interaction. We get the F statistic exactly the same way, first dividing each sum of squares by its degrees of freedom to get the mean square values, then dividing each source of possible between group variation by the within group variation or the error variation. Nice! So each F statistic gets its own p-value, so you're testing three hypotheses simultaneously, and each of the p-values tells us uh, whether that sort of variance is statistically significant. Now, how do we interpret the results of two-way ANOVA? If there is a significant interaction, you typically focus on that rather than the main effects, since the main effects can be misleading when an interaction is present. For example, in this case, it looks like there is an interaction between the fertilizers and sunlight. The main effects we saw previously with fertilizer C become less meaningful because the effect of fertilizer depends on sunlight levels. We might find that fertilizer C works best with sunlight and fertilizers B and A work best with less light. We would need to examine the interaction plot and do simple effect analysis. In this other example, it looks like at least one fertilizer works better overall, and sunlight levels also matter. However, there doesn't seem to be an interaction between both. The effect of sunlight is consistent across all three fertilizers. Nice! So to recap, ANOVA, or analysis of variance, is a statistical method used to test whether there are significant differences between the means of three or more independent groups. To use ANOVA correctly, you need to make sure your data meets ANOVA's assumptions. Firstly, independence of observations. The observations within each group should be independent of each other. In this case, each plant's height is independent and does not influence the height of other plants. Next, homogeneity of variance, meaning the variances in each group should be roughly the same. This can be checked with the Levine test. If the condition of variance homogeneity is not fulfilled, Welch's ANOVA can be calculated instead of the normal ANOVA. Finally, we have normal distribution, meaning the data within the group should be normally distributed. This means that the majority of the values are in the average range, while very few values are significantly below or significantly above. If this condition is not met, then the kruskal wallis test can be used. And that is all for today. Squid-tastic! Thank you so much for watching, hope you found this useful, and do let me know if there was anything unclear or any other topics you'd like to see. Have a squid-tastic day, and see you in the next one!